Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. Today in this video I will talk about service oriented architecture and I will also try to explain all of the design principles of service oriented architecture in 10 minutes duration. Before I proceed I will request you to please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed to the channel before so that you are able to get latest videos from the channel when they are uploaded. Uh, before I proceed to the explanation of design principles which are associated with service oriented architecture, it's important to have a brief and high level uh, definition and overview of what SOA is. SOA which is an abbreviation for service oriented architecture is a software design style which is based on eight design principles that we will be covering in this video. SOA is a shift from legacy monolithic standalone applications towards reusable pieces of services which are combined to work together to achieve business goals. Service oriented architecture enables organizations uh, by a better return on their investment and it improves time to market by uh, enabling them to create applications utilizing the SOA principle in a more efficient and faster manner. SOA principles can be applied either on the enterprise level or at the individual project levels. Now I will talk one by one about all of the eight design principles which are associated with service oriented architecture. The first design principle of service oriented architecture is standardization of service contracts. This design principle states that we should be exposing service capabilities and functionalities with well-defined data formats, data models, data specifications, and any associated transport mechanisms which are being used for those services and any policies which are associated with those services should be well uh, defined using the standardized service contracts. Standardized service contracts of our uh, services implemented using SOA architecture make it uh, easier for any of the end user or any of the client who wants to utilize the services. For example, if you are implementing uh, your SOA based uh, uh, application using web services like uh, SOAP web services, in that case your visual definition file is uh, the service contract. So all the details of the capabilities or the functionalities which are available in your service should be well exposed from, the, uh, from this contract so that anyone who wants to utilize these services can understand exactly what are the functionalities, what are the policies, what are the transport mechanisms, what kind of data format this, uh, these services are expecting and what are the type of uh, inputs and outputs and what are the fault messages and every uh, such detail which is associated with the functionalities of those services should be exposed in a standardized manner using the service contracts. The next design principle of SOA is loose coupling of the services. This uh, design principle states that we should uh, implement our services in such a way that they have least dependency or ideally no dependency uh, between the services. This loose coupling of uh, the services uh, makes it uh, makes service oriented architecture uh, ideal for uh, uh, for benefiting from other uh, SOA design principles which we will be discussing later. Uh, in this video. The next design principle of service oriented architecture is service abstraction. This design principle states or suggests that we should be implementing our services in such a way that we are exposing the contracts, we are exposing the capabilities and functionalities through the contracts, but any internal nitty gritties, internal technicalities or any technical details uh, which are uh, underneath our services are not exposed to the outer world and they are completely abstracted. This uh, makes it more ideal that uh, even if we have to make any changes internally in the, in the implementation or uh, uh, behind the screen for our uh, services, it should not be affecting any end users because whatever we are exposing through the service contracts is not dependent and it's uh, completely abstracting the nitty gritties and technical details of our services. The next design principle of service oriented architecture which is the fourth design principle is service reusability. This is one of the most uh, highly uh, recommended and highly talked about uh, uh, design principle associated with service oriented architecture because reusability is one of the major goals that we achieve using SOA principles. 
any applica any application which is based on the services a uh, small set of services uh, can be better utilized if we uh, write our services using this uh, uh, design principle in mind instead of reinventing the wheel we should be implementing our services in such a way that they can be uh, plugged and played in any other application when and where needed and they can be reused uh, whenever we we have a situation like this the next design principle of uh, service oriented architecture is service autonomy this design principle states that we should uh, have our services implemented in such a way that services have strong and full control over its own capabilities this means that whenever we have certain services service uh, if whatever uh, functionalities that service is providing this service should be able to provide its functionalities or fulfill its uh, responsibilities without having any dependency on any other services and uh, this uh, design principle basically uh, is uh, somehow associated with another design principle which is uh, loose coupling of services which, which we have already talked before so uh, services uh, functionalities uh, when we are designing our services we should keep in mind that even if one of the uh, other service is not available and if uh, for example we have service x and service y the service x whatever functionalities it has should it, this service should be able to complete its uh, task and this service should be able to provide its services even if service y is not available for any reasons the next design principle of service oriented architecture talks about service statelessness so soa recommends that we should be implementing our services in such a way that we have uh, we have no ideally we have no or even if we cannot completely avoid it we should have minimal overheads of state information that we are saving so if we have our web services or uh, if we have our soa based application which are maintaining a lot of state information this results in performance impl implications and performance overheads so we should uh, try to minimize this overhead by implementing our services using the design principles and this design principle which uh, talks about minimum or no state information uh, maintained or st uh, are preserved when implementing the services the next design principle of service oriented architecture is service discoverability whenever we are implementing certain services which are providing some capabilities or functionalities these uh, details or these functionalities should be uh, discoverable this means whenever any application or any other service wants to utilize these functionalities there should be some service registry uh, service catalog from there those applications can realize that there is already a service which is providing these uh, functionalities so uh, using the this uh, design principle we should uh, implement our services and we should expose our service capabilities through a service registry uh, for a better utilization of the available services the next which is the eighth and the last design principle of service oriented architecture is service composability service composition is uh, basically clubbing or grouping together two or more services to make them a composite service to achieve certain business goal so we should be uh, implementing our services in such a way that whenever we have a need we can combine them together and achieve our business goals in a more efficient manner so that's it from today's video about service oriented architecture design principles and uh, if you like the video please uh, do subscribe to the channel and also you are uh, free to comment below in the comment section if you have any question or if you want any clarities or if you have any inputs to add further on this thank you very much